Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, astronomers using the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope announce a new dwarf planet discovery in the outer solar system. And astronomers using ESO's very large telescope show us the deepest look yet into the magnificent Orion Nebula. The largest and most distant object orbiting the Sun was observed by astronomers on Mauna Kea's Canada-France-Hawaii Telescope. Designated 2015 RR245 by the International Astronomical Union's Minor Planet Center, this object is currently some 64 astronomical units, or 9.5 billion kilometers, from the Sun, more than twice Neptune's distance. And, despite being extremely faint, it could be as large as 700 kilometers, or 450 miles, across. It has an orbit outlined here in yellow that is highly elliptical and takes it well beyond anything we've ever seen. At its farthest, 2015 RR245 extends well past 120 astronomical units, or 18 billion kilometers, from the Sun. It was first imaged by the Outer Solar System's Origin Survey, which attempts to map the orbits of objects in the outer regions of our solar system. This dwarf planet is the largest found in the survey, and which has so far found over 500 of these so-called trans-Neptunian worlds. These are bodies that orbit outside the planet Neptune, and the IAU's Minor Planet Center has found 1,491 objects in orbit like this, and another 501 in the outer solar system that occupy odd and quite unusual elliptical orbits. On average, one gets added to the list about every five days. This minor planet was found by astronomers in February 2016 using the OSOS images taken in September 2015. The vast majority of the dwarf planets, like 2015 RR245, were destroyed or thrown from the solar system in the chaos that ensued as the giant planets moved out of their present positions. RR245 is one of the few dwarf planets that has survived to the present day, along with Pluto and Eris, the largest known dwarf planets. RR245 now circles the Sun among the remnant population of tens of thousands of much smaller trans-Neptunian worlds, and most of the orbit of this one has not even been seen. Worlds that journey far from the Sun have exotic geology with landscapes made of many different frozen materials, as the recent flyby of Pluto by the New Horizons spacecraft showed. Now because it's so far away, I mean it takes 2015 RR245 700 years to go around the Sun once, and it's only been observed for a tiny fraction of that time basically one year, and so they're still refining the orbit, but over the years, astronomers will get a better idea of its path more precisely, and at some point, they'll give it a name. And in case you were wondering, the way that works is, the members of the OSOS team, since they were the ones who found it, get to submit a recommendation for a name for consideration by the International Astronomical Union, which is the only authority when it comes to naming things in the sky. Now, previous surveys have mapped almost all of the brighter dwarf planets. 2015 RR245 may be one of the last large worlds beyond Neptune to be found until much larger telescopes such as the LSST come online in the mid-2020s. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Next, astronomers using the Very Large Telescope in Chile took the deepest picture of the venerable Orion Nebula ever taken. Using the Hawk 1 infrared instrument, we now have an image of not only spectacular beauty, but one that has revealed an abundance of faint brown dwarfs and isolated planetary mass objects. The very presence of these low-mass bodies provides an exciting insight into the history of star formation within the nebula itself. This new image reveals an unexpected wealth of very low-mass objects, which in turn suggests that the Orion Nebula may be forming proportionately far more low-mass objects than closer and less active star formation regions. The famous Orion Nebula is about 24 light years across and lies within the constellation of Orion. It's visible from Earth with the naked eye as a fuzzy patch in Orion's sword. Some nebulae, like Orion, are strongly illuminated by ultraviolet radiation from the many hot stars being born inside, so much so that the gas is ionized and glows very brightly. The relative closeness of the Orion Nebula makes it an ideal testbed to better understand the process and history of star formation, as well as determine how many stars of different masses form. 
So what they do is astronomers count up how many objects of different masses form in regions like the Orion Nebula to try and understand the star formation process. Now before this research, the greatest number of objects were found with masses of about one quarter of that of our Sun. These observations also hint that the number of planet-sized objects might be far greater than previously thought. While the technology to readily observe these objects doesn't exist yet, the European Extremely Large Telescope, or the EELT, being built by ESO, is scheduled to begin operations in 2024, is designed to pursue this as one of its goals. And of course, I will let you know. <laughs> Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters for making SFN possible, and thank you for watching. And as always, keep looking up.